Hey everyone, welcome back to some Dungeons and Dragons. Now, um, in my last video, someone talked about how they liked how I broke down Constitution as an ability score, and want to see Intelligence and Wisdom broken down as ability scores. At first I was like, okay, well, there's a few things I could address, but the more I looked into it, the more I realized how lopsided it is. So, I'm pulling up the Intelligence and Wisdom checks over on um, the Player's Handbook, and I'm just going to compare each of them and kind of break down what each gives you, and how it kind of interacts, how wisdom kind of wins this fight in a few ways that it's like, oh, well, the ability scores aren't balanced always, and like different classes have different focuses. Well, it's, it's a bit more imbalanced than I thought. When you really break it down, it becomes worse and worse, and it's really unfortunate. So I'm going to go through each of them. First, we talk about classes, then we'll talk about saving throws, then we'll talk about uh, skills. So, first we talk about the classes that are affected by intelligence. Um, of course, the wizard. There are some fighter and rogue archetypes that also get affected by intelligence. And later they add the artificer. So, meanwhile, the cleric, the cleric, the druid, the monk, and the ranger were all um, wisdom classes from the get-go. So, four full-on classes, two exemplary, versus one and a half. Now... I wouldn't actually take this as a point against intelligence too much. As long as there are some classes that have a focus in your ability score. Like, hey, if your party's four wizards, then hey, intelligence is suddenly much more important than wisdom in the party. Um, I don't think... As long as it's you have representation, it should be fine. The main concern is multiclassing. And I guess maybe multi classing is a variant option. Maybe we don't talk about it, but definitely a lot easier to multi-class with wisdom-based classes. Monk and Ranger, both frontline combatants, or can be. Druid and Cleric, both full-on casters. Versus full caster, frontline fighter. Like, fighter and rogue might be the one that could pull it off. But I have a feeling if you do fighter rogue, you're not doing wizard. You're not doing intelligence. Hmm. So that's... Classes, just thought I'd get that out of the way. So next we go to saving throws. And so, I went through every intelligence saving throw. And in the player's handbook, there were two spells. Feeble Mind and Phantasmal Force. If you go on D&D Beyond and look up the spells... You know what, let's actually do this. So I just type in... Five, I, you can see all the other things... That I listed because I just researched this. So if you go into advanced filters here, um, let's see, save required, intelligence, and the sources player's handbook. So just did those filters. You can see two spells. Two spells in total have intelligence saves. Feeble Mind and Phantasmal Force. Now this isn't exactly fair as I kept looking. I found that Maze requires an intelligence check, and um, Illusions required investigation checks. So, this isn't all the spells, but it really shows that intelligence saving throws don't really help for spells too much. Ugh. But, then, then later they added, um, I think, a total of eight spells, one of which is a cantrip. Thank you, Mind Spike. Yeah, so let's just really quick... Pull off the um, player's handbook filter. And I think we get a full eight spells. So, enemies abound. That's a good spell. Third level. Um, mental prison. Mind sliver. This is the one that's beautiful. Freaking cantrip. We all need a cantrip. Um, some ninth level spells. Tasha's mind rip. Like, we actually have some of those spells. So, intelligence has some representation. When it had basically none at all. I realize now that you can't even really see that but uh, my apologies anyways there are also for enemies intellect devourers and mind flayers um also have some saving throws that force intelligence saves mind flayers notably uh, intellect devourers are notably um a devastating low level encounter because of the intelligence based attacks basically turns your wizard into the tank for the party but still it's taking damage now the thing is, I, I, I just kind of want to break this down. Um, if you're facing an in, 
Oh my gosh. If you're facing an Intellect Devourer, you're probably also facing Mind Flayers in the same campaign. Um, like, Intellect Devourers are made by Mind Flayers. They're part of the same sort of society. If one shows up, the other's showing up. If Intelligence... and If your campaign need has these sort of themes the intelligence is important if it doesn't what are you doing with intelligence saves feeble mind how many creatures do you know cast feeble mind on the party the only one that comes to mind is demogorgon this is very uncommon and your dm probably doesn't want to throw it at you phantasmal force and other illusions let's just talk about illusions in general what was the last time you threw illusion at your party? It, I'm not going to deny it happens. I've seen some really smart illusions. But the vast majority of sessions, unless an illusion is planned, an illusion is not coming out. Basically, for intelligence saves to be useful, the campaign needs to be ready to give intelligence saves to be useful. Now, illusions, if you have an illusionist character that jumps in at times, then that alone can make intelligence saves more valuable. But if that's not, if you're not able to add that in, if you're not able to consistently add illusions, intelligence becomes a faltering ability. And like, also notes that investigation checks, because they're not saving throws, that means like a rogue's intelligence save isn't very potent. Um, versus like actually just gain expertise in investigation or the observant feats, because it's not a saving throw. It's an ability. We'll get to skills later. All right. So now for wisdom saving throws. So I did that same search with um, wisdom saves, and you get 40 spells. It gets It's a full-on list. It's a full-on additional list. Um, we just switch intelligence over to wisdom. And while you can't see all the spells listed, you can see this additional pages down there. So, yeah, there's a lot more wisdom saving throws. Now, albeit, this game is designed... So that dexterity, constitution, and wisdom saving throws are stronger than the other saving throws. That's why you get one of each. But then there's some spells that don't make sense. Like, if we keep going, you will notice detect thoughts and modify memory and things of that nature are, intel are wisdom saves, not intelligence saves. Prying into your mind is a wisdom save. Modifying what you remember, what you recall, what you understand. Like, intelligence measures mental acuity accuracy of recall literally intelligence measures accuracy of recall and modify memory is not an intelligence saving throw so there's definitely space where wisdom saving throws can be added to intelligence don't deny that i should also note that any mental attack like also um any attack that isn't like dexterity or constitution based it's basically Wisdom is a bucket of we throw everything in there that we don't know where to put it, is basically how I see wisdom. Um, possession, they've defined to be charisma-based, which, strangely enough, charm and fear effects are not charisma-based. Um, don't ask me, I have a whole talk when we get into when I thought about honor. This is where charms and fear, honor helps with that. Um, basically, I just gave an example of other spells that are just like, they, if they aren't explicitly intelligence or charisma saving throws, they are wisdom saving throws. Which is, I guess, if you want wisdom to be very important, this is a way to make wisdom very important. It's just, it's kind of poor. It's kind of a poor way of pulling it off. But yeah, in saving throws, wisdom beats intelligence. Again, so this, I do count points for it, that wisdom is now more important. So this is, this I think was designed. Wisdom was supposed to be a potent saving throw. Okay, so... Here is where wisdom was supposed to have the edge. Now, intelligence, I guess it has supposed to have the edge in skills, right? That's what's supposed to be. After all, intelligence saves, if they're useful, they're only useful for specific campaigns or specific sessions. They're not used. Most of the time, intelligence saves never come up. So now we go into skills. And so I'm just going to call the intelligence skills the four knowledges. Because if you look at it, Arcana... Measures your ability to recall lore about feeds. History. Measures your ability to recall lore. Nature. Measures your ability to recall lore. Measures your ability to recall lore. That's all these are. If you played earlier editions like 3.5, they had a skill called Knowledge, and then it had a bunch of, like, 13 different sub-skills 
of architecture, dungeoneering, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's the four knowledges, basically. And how important is knowledge in your campaign? Here is where it gets weird. I want you to consider, as a DM, is there any information that you have that you hide from players? So, here is the question. So, first of all, if there's an accessible library, if you have, like, the scholar archetype, or, sorry, background, if you have the scholar background, a library kind of allows you to get information that you wouldn't be able to get through here anyways. So, you can get the information there. In addition, I want you to think as a DM, um, is there info that could be hidden, but the fact that it's hidden doesn't damage the story? Like, if you hide that, um, I don't know, that the goblins use this sort of ritual or something, can, if the, no one figures out about that, does that harm the story? Does that harm, like, oh, I didn't know they could do that? And, like, is, is the statement, well, nobody bothered to learn it, actually, like, a statement that's going to end in a feel-good campaign at the end of the day? Is there, also, is there info that can um, be revealed without spoiling the story. If you're telling a mystery, and it has something to do with the history of the people, if you could just intelligence check and get the background information that makes the connection, then you just jumped through an entire arc of the story. And that also doesn't work. Um, also, just as a DM, I know for my myself, I kind of craft story as it goes. I think they want to talk about plants, then I start thinking about interesting plants. Um, and then, like, I'll just tell them, hey, you have proficiency with nature. You should know that this is how this plant works. Which is this... It's this weird issue where... How do you... Is there ever times, as a DM, where you have this monologue prepared, where you have what you want the party to know, and you just don't tell them? Again, does this work, does this work for your campaign? Much like the intelligence saving throws, all the knowledge skills... Don't always work for your campaign. Because if you're in the far... Sh sorry, if you're in Sword Coast, most of that is already known. And not too much of it is too important to know. Like, I guess in Storm King's Thun... Like, maybe in um water the Waterdeep campaign, there's a lot more with history and stuff. But in Storm King's Thunder, any info you don't know about giants, there's literally a part in at the end of chapter one where you meet a giant who tells you everything you need to know. So you don't need to know about it. Um, if like, there's not really much space for knowledge because it's you either have it or you don't. It's basically the issue. And if you don't have it, your DM has to find a way to allow you to have it. Cause that's how interesting storytelling works often. Like, if you can have a mystery... Like, the thing is, every mystery about lacking lore can easily be solved elsewhere. And it just... It's a very strange um, ability score to implement, is all I'm trying to get at. Knowledge isn't always easily implemented, and sometimes... We'll get to this as we... I think... Um, one of the last things I noted... I'm going to get through this after I finish that investigation. But, yeah, with investigation, it is the Illusion Breaker... And I then asked the question of how often illusions show up. We talked about that in saving throws. And then there's kind of this question of what do you use investigation for when you don't accept perception? Um, basically, perception... What does percep What does investigation do that perception can't? What... Like, I think they even give the example, like, you would think you'd do it for seek finding um, secret entrances. That's how I always used it. Like, aha, determine the weakest point of the tunnel. Um, find the hand frag knowledge. Look, deduce the location of a hidden object. Yes, that's exactly why I think of investigation would be for. Then we go into perception. Finding a hidden object is literally described as an example of the DM typically asks you to make a wisdom perception check here. <laughs> Finding a hidden object, as the DM will typically ask for a wisdom perception check, yet that's the example you use in investigation. You might deduce the location of a hidden object. Basically, what I'm getting at is what can investigation do that perception can't, and it's find illusions and nothing else, nothing more. So, then we get the last thing that I need to bring up, which is where I was bringing up with the knowledge is. If you have one intelligence character, even knowledge is important, do you need more than one character who has 
proficiency in nature. That's proficiency in history. Proficiency in any of these skills. Because once one person says, Ah, you know this about the arcane knowledge. He's going to relate it to the party. Once he knows about this history, he's going to relate it to the party, look for help. Once he investigates and finds the secret entrance, he's going to let the entire party know that there's that entrance. Usually time is not an issue. This is, you see it, you recall the lore, and then as you guys are trying to figure out a plan, you just release. You give the investigation. Um, so it's like, if you have one character that has the issue, like, here's the thing, if everyone, I've, we've done this before, where we need a nature check. Everyone's going to ask, can they make a nature check? And if everyone does, someone's going to roll super high and then solve the issue anyways, without, an, without proficiency to nature. If you only allow those that are proficient, you only need one that has decent rolls for most, for most things. Most, I guess multiple nature would allow like more archaic knowledge to be revealed more often, but like, and this also assumes that you only allow people with proficiency in a knowledge to roll, which is kind of a weird rule, weird rule. Like, oh, the wizard knows nothing about nature. He can't even identify a simple plant. Like, there's a lot of, you have to finagle it and the finagling isn't very well defined. And also because of story reasons, a lot of times people don't finagle, they just tell the story. Um, yeah, I gave an example of like, oh yeah, if you find an illusion, you're going to tell everyone that this is an illusion. If you know an enemy's weakness, tell everyone, throw fire at the troll! God's sakes, use fire! If you find a hidden door, I mean, when you open the door, everyone's going to know the door's there. Ah. So, the thing is, you can at least argue that there's value in one person being very intelligent. That's pretty cool. That That is nice. That is, I've done that before. I've been the big brain of the party and being the intelligence based character you feel useful but everyone the thing is one the big brain literally everyone else can have an intelligence of eight without issue no issue appears in the party when i have an intelligence of 16 and everyone else has eight that's weird that's the weird part all right now for wisdom animal handling so oh let's get to some of these so other intelligence checks is communicating with to a creature without using words. Animal handling is literally about communicating to animals without using words. Um, into an animal's intent. Like, maybe you could use intelligence to then communicate your intent to them. Maybe that's it. But usually I'd use charisma for communicating my own intent. Not mention um, all these other things, like estimate the value of a precious item. You're going to a store, unless they're trying to jip you off, and then you use insight to prevent them from jipping you off. And this, that's happening. That's already taken care of. Pull together a disguise. That's a disguise kit. I use charisma for that. Forge a document. Forgery kit. Hey, that's hey, that's actually an intelligence check. Look at that. But, like, the charlatan has a feature that basically takes care of this immediately. Like, they have an alternate identity that's perfectly all right. Recall lore. We already talked about the lore issue here. And then win a game of skill. How often does that come? I always find if I want a game of game of skill to occur in my game, I want to actually play a game of skill. I want to play a hand of just a quick hand of poker with the entire party. I don't want to just roll a intelligence check, unless it's unimportant. If it's just random gambling, maybe. But like, that's the thing. It has to be like random gambling for me to just use an intelligence check instead of other things. All right, so animal handling, just kind of weird that kind of does what they give an example that intelligence does. So, but it is sometimes a dud, but one of the things I also note, it kind of does a lot of what I would expect nature to do. It's inter it's all the interactive, it's a lot of interactive nature stuff. Um, but yeah, if you're, but it takes care of domesticated animals. It's. Keep them out from getting spooked. Animal handling is a useful skill if you're a mounted combatant. Great. Um, very useful skill. It's useful in certain situations. If you're a certain character, you'll want animal handling. Insight. Always good to have one person with insight, at least. Uh, protective measures, even amongst the honest. It just makes sure you can't get lied to. Stops deception checks in their tracks. That's basically... Like, preventing the enemy, the person from lying to you, is valuable. Even if it's just like a stopgap. 
I guess you could say the same with in, with investigation, making sure they're not illusions. But lies happen a lot more than illusions in the world. Illusions are a lie first. Like, that's the theme. Um, medicine. Medicine, we're just going to be blunt. It's a dud. It literally says right here. Let's you try to stabilize a dying companion. Um, healer's kits don't require proficiency. Diagnose an illness. Um, I, I would identify an illness with nature check, personally. So, I guess there. Th when it comes to medicine... Intelligence wins out. Great. Awesome. Then we get to perception. So I'm just going to start with arguably the best skill. So it prevents surprise rounds. Um, and so the importance of surprise rounds, keep in mind how short a combat is. A combat could be as short as like... Th I've seen average combats being like three rounds or something like that. This is one round where the enemy does not get to attack you. This is one additional round of power output. That is powerful. That is very potent. Um, so, yeah. It also allows you to see surroundings. We just go in through, find a hidden object, what they really defined for investigation. DM typically asks you to make a perception check. Ugh. And basically, that's the theme. Perception does everything investigation doesn't. And... We'll get, we'll get more into perception when we get to the conclusion, but lastly, I want to get to su survival, which is basically all the important nature checks. It's how you get... It's following tracks, hunting game, um, guiding your group through bad places, identify signs of enemies nearby, um, avoid hazards, hunt... Like, it's... Survival is navigation, and it's... Um, it's navigation, and it's... Um, feeding it's getting resources to continue through the wilds foraging um and it just kind of it feels more like an intelligence skill sometimes it's knowledge of the terrain it's nature stuff i always find that strange that this is just the better version of nature generally speaking survival is just the better nature skill and like here's the last thing so we talked about with intelligence once you get one wisdom character once you get one intelligence character you're good for the entire party. <clears throat> but multiple wisdom characters, you want multiple people with wisdom characters. Perception, if you're in an encounter, this is one of the things where, yes, you want to tell everyone, but you're probably telling them a little too late. You're getting, They're getting the surprise round on you. If you have multiple people with high passive perceptions, that's multiple people not being tricked in the surprise round. That's huge. Um, if you have multiple survival characters, then when you're navigating through an area, you can have one person navigating, one person foraging for food. You can have, you could have two people guaranteeing that you make sure that you don't run into some dangerous quicksand or something like that. Which, compared to two people making sure you don't run into dangerous quicksand versus two people making sure you know the exact species of flower... I think there's a bit of variance. One of those is a little more important. And, like, that's kind of the theme. That wisdom is designed so that multiple people can need it. Where, uh, that's the theme. Like, wisdom is just so much more useful. By the way, thank you for coming in, Extrium. Let me know if you want to ask anything. Um, once I finish this up, you can guide the conversation, basically. Alright. So, from here, we kind of have identified... Wisdom wins in skills. Wisdom wins in um, saving throws by a long shot. That is, de they define that. They want wisdom to beat saving throws. And wisdom wins in classes. Unless you're a wizard. Um, but there's, you know, unless you really want to play one of these, wisdom wins in general classes. Because there's more of them. So. Uh, here's, where do we go? So let's actually try to fix the problem. Um, I would say there's kind of two problems. The first is that wisdom is overinflated, and intelligence is underinflated. It's not just that wisdom is more powerful than intelligence, it's that wisdom is more powerful than most skill most ability scores by far, and then intelligence is less powerful than most ability scores by far. Um, if it's not your main stat, like wisdom like if it's not your main stat, you could dump intelligence. Wisdom, if it's not your main stat, Dump, dump wisdom at your own peril. 
it's not as dangerous to dump as something like Constitution, but it's still pretty poor. It's still, it's still so important compared to like strength, compared to other things. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm not just going to increase intelligence. I'm also going to try to increase other skills. But so in some cases I'll be putting wisdom into charisma stuff. Um, hopefully try to make sure charisma charisma isn't lost in the process. So <clears throat> classes I. I honestly don't think um, classes need much changes. Um, if you're multi-classing, lacking more intelligence-based classes is an issue. I'm not going to deny that. But, like, what? Do we make clerics intelligence-based? That that could actually work. Warlocks intelligence-based? That could work. But in all these cases, why are you doing intelligence instead of wisdom? I usually, with those sort of themes... Um, and I'll get through all these. Thank you, XGM. Don't, don't worry, I have some plans. Um, I have a few more. But yeah, when it comes to classes, when it comes to just classes that use intelligence, a lot of classes already use intelligent. Um, a lot of classes, I think just, ah, uh, it's so hard to get the right phrasing here. My apologies. But I think... Our answer is we strengthen elsewhere. We don't focus on just cl on classes being where intelligence is potent. Um, so I think we just move on. Saving throws? So here's a theme that I'm going to say that might be a bit biased. I think all saving throws should be retooled to be more equal. So this is kind of me doing that. So I'm going to warn you now because I'm going to be suggesting some things that push not just intelligence saves high, but pushes all save try to i'm trying to push all saves to a high point so first of all this one no matter what you're doing you should fix spells to be more you should give more intelligent saving throws right now there's two and then it went up to eight thanks to tasha's cauldron but like detect thoughts that should be an intelligent saving throw to stop them from reading your thoughts not a wisdom saving throw scrying um uh, things that um find where you are that sense your presence i feel like intelligence is a great way to break divinations um at least adding those to intelligence, I think would be very valuable. Um, maybe a bit more. Um, hypnotic pattern is technically an illusion. We might be able to say hypnotic pattern is intelligence based. I'm not sure about that one. Honestly, hypnotic pattern should be enchantment spell personally, but whatever. So moving on, another thing that I like to add. So this just kind of makes it so that it's more variable. It's not just a give or die. It's actually sometimes useful. But I want to make intelligence something that is consistently used as a saving throw. And personally, I think constitution. People who like constitution saves, the fighters, the barbarians, they like it because they help you resist not just cold damage, but acid, necrotic death effects, banshee shrieks. They don't really care about concentration being elsewhere. And I would, I think concentration, the ability to focus in a fight, the ability to multitask, to keep an eye on your target and hold down this spell, make sure the incantation keeps going. I would say that's more of an intelligence based check. I would move concentration to intelligence. This is where my bias kicks in because I want intelligence to be potent. Like I want to make all the saving throws potent and shifting concentration from constitution over to intelligence is a great way to make intelligence a valuable saving throw. Um, so then um, with Ah, I don't have it listed here. But yeah, another thing is wisdom. I talked about in a later in a previous conversation that having fear and charm seem perfectly like charisma saves is controlling your emotions. So shouldn't your emotional presence, your power like that, shouldn't that be what protects you from it? So at the very least, fear. Fear is staying brave in the face of danger. I would definitely put charisma there. Um, make charisma a bit stronger make wisdom a bit weaker make it more, not as distinct so with that generally wisdom still becomes a stronger okay with the concentration intelligence becomes a notable saving throw but i think if we just do this effect wisdom is still very useful but it's not at if we do all of it it no longer becomes as mandatory and int is no longer a fringe save and that's what just what i want to make sure i want to make int not such an absol absolutely fringe save with mind flayers and that's it so for skills, so first I want to just kind of go over how, hey, medicine could just shift it to religion. I think medicine being a skill was kind of a oversight. Like, as we said, 
It just lets you stabilize the dying companion. Are you done with the healer kit? Healer's kit. Diagnose an Ill illness. That could be re that could be just nature. Maybe we just say um religion is also medicine. Just small things like that. Um survival and nature. There could be more interaction there. Um. This is kind of a weird theme because a lot of the survival-based classes, like Ranger and Druid, um, they're wisdom-based, so it might it might honestly be that, that nature becomes part of survival and it becomes wisdom-based. But then like, we can merge out perception and investigation a bit more. We can make it actually identify hidden items. We can basically remove this effect where perception is used to find hidden objects. We can make it so investigation at least does that. Usually what I do is passive passive perception is special because perception in my games, perception is not rolled. Perception is just passive perception. It's when you don't see it coming, perception is what stops you. Anytime they try to figure out what's going on to sense what I didn't tell them already, I use investigation for that. That's how I fix it. Um, but yeah, kind of figuring out how you merge them, how you fix those around does help with that. But now... I'm going to bring up the huge one. If you're still like, you just want one big change that makes intelligence useful, I want to bring this up. This is a system that a lot of people probably know because it existed in 3.5. Um, so in 3.5, they had skill points. Instead of having proficiency in skills, you had a certain amount of points you can spend to get yourself better bonuses to each skill. And intelligence is your means to... Yeah, I bet. Um, so intelligence is your means to spend skill L points. Like, the more intelligence, the more skill points you have. So in the same way, we can um, make it so that you gain additional skill proficiencies. And hey, even languages. Having only one language each is good, a bit... It's a bit weird if you're, like, a plus four intelligence and you only know common and your native language. Then again, a lot of people are like that. Depends on what sort of world you're running in. Anyways... So you could gain an additional proficiency for each bonus for your intelligence mod. So if you have plus two intelligence, you get two additional proficiencies. Now to prevent, to make sure it's really wanted, to make sure you actually need these skills, I actually give each class one less skill by their base class. So like the Barbarian only gets one skill between those and then has to rely on their background to get their additional skills. Basically, if you have a penalty to intelligence, you would rely on your um, background to give you anything for your skills. Um, if, with this rule, rule, Intelligence 8 Barbarian, whatever their background is the only two skills they would have. Um, otherwise, um, the, if you have a high intelligence, suddenly skill monkey, suddenly a rogue that wants to be very skillful and use reliable talent. Suddenly the rogue really cares about intelligence. The bard of lore that has all those different skill proficiencies, they could have intelligence here. Um, Make it, yeah, as I said, it's a skill monkey character. So therefore, it actually extends over to classes. Um, now, I will say, if you do this change, a lot of the other changes I suggested become a lot, a lot too much. Um, this change to skill points and skill monkeying is huge. I, I'm just going to note, a lot of people have suggested it. It's, it. it's suggested because it works, not because it's the... Not because it keeps everything... Not because you could do it with all these other themes and it will still work. Um, generally speaking, I would say... Yeah. If you do... Yeah, if you do both, it's too much. You have to choose one path on the others. My my personal suggestion, you shift the saving throws. You make intelligence... Um, your, con your concentration checks are intelligence is what I would do. And, you know, as I said, the detect thoughts, the scrying, that's intelligence saves. But from there, you kind of just have to consider what your table uses, how your table uses skills. If you're finding that your table isn't using religion and med isn't much, you combine them into one skill. It's just religion or something like that. Um, survival and nature. If nature is not being used much, consider making a balance or just ripping nature out and just saying, hey, survival is the wisdom-based skill. And then we push more into investigation. It's a lot of this to balance out the two skills involves balancing out how your table uses each skill. Unfortunately, that's all I can really say at the end here. Um, if your table doesn't balance it out, then it's going to be biased one way or another anyways. I mean, if your table only does, like, gym workouts campaign, then of course athletics is going to be the most important skill. But I'm assuming most campaigns aren't like that. Most, I'm sure there are definitely campaigns out there like that. 
anyways, with that, I think I talked about just about everything I want to talk about between intelligence and wisdom. I think it's still important that there are they are two different ability scores. Um, this isn't like the Constitution where I was like, I don't. You can find a way to build a system without Constitution. You could find a way to remove a non roleplay element, but it's important that these are two different skills because if you just had one that was combined, it would just It'd be way too much on a single ability score. But I think it's just... It's a matter of balancing the two ability scores is the main theme. I think with that, I said everything I need to say. You just... You take these suggestions. You figure out what works with your table. Um, figuring out how things work with your table is often just... That's just enough. Um, honestly, that is the solution to every problem. Work with your pay table. Um, but not trying to cop out. Trying to be more precise. Anyways, with that, I think that's all I really had to say. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.